Where's the attic? <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to our second session of Instagram Live. It's good to see all of you here on the platform again. Thank you so much everyone who tuned in last time uh, on Monday with Mandy Moore. Uh, she is delightful and I uh, really appreciate everyone tuning in and submitting your questions. I did forget, however, to plug Mandy's new album, which just came out. It's called Silver Landings and it's amazing. I've listened to it a hundred times. So I have to make up as a, as a friend to say, please go listen to Mandy's new album. Uh, it's incredible. Her amazing husband, Taylor, also put out uh, a song yesterday, I believe, uh, all about uh, social separation and staying home and how easy it can be. So go check that out as well. Uh, today we're going to be joined uh, by Connie Schultz, uh, somebody who I truly admire, not only as uh, someone who makes being a political spouse look so easy, uh, but it's just also a wonderful human being and a great presence on Twitter as well, which I really uh, admire. So before we uh, bring Connie in, we've got quite a few questions uh, to get to, and we'll bring Connie in because I think a lot of the questions apply to her uh, as well. And if you have other questions, you can just type them in the comment bar and submit them that way. Maybe we can get to those uh, as well. But hello to all of you joining us today. So a lot of really funny questions. Uh, and I think one of the interesting things is how many different types of questions were submitted. So some of them are ridiculously political, uh, which I have no idea how to answer. And some of them are, are so in depth in the Harry Potter world that even I don't know how to answer them. Uh, and I love it. I, I just love all of you and all of your questions. Uh, one thing that was really funny is Tay asked, what was the weirdest thing that happened to you on the trail? And I was thinking about that uh, this morning, so one time uh, I was giving a speech in DC. I forget what event it was for. Maybe it was New York. And uh, I took up what I thought was my speech. Uh, and when I got to the podium, I quickly realized that it was not the speech the, that I was, I thought I was prepared to give. And I had to make up so much stuff on the spot trying to remember what I had written myself and what the team had helped me write, filling in the blanks of uh, one of the drafts that I, that I had brought up, which was a little nerve wracking. That was very early on in the campaign too, which is where uh, improv skills definitely came, uh, came into play. So don't ever let anybody poo poo on a theater degree uh, because it definitely came in handy uh, then. Uh, Karen asked about advice for parents to keep kids motivated uh, and involved. And I think my advice to you today would just be to remember that curiosity is key and you really have to strive to help your kids be curious and it doesn't have to be about the things that they were studying in school or even talking about in school. You should just ask them, uh, what are they curious about? What do they want to know more about? Um, but make sure you're setting some really uh, firm boundaries so uh, that you know what they should be working on, they know what they should be working on and ask for specific outcomes. But it could be anything related to music or Legos or drawing or theater. Just ask for them to have a product to show you uh, and to show their learning. But I also think it's really important that in this time of uh, chaos and anxiety that we don't put too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect. So just because uh, you now are tasked with homeschooling your kid doesn't mean you have to be a perfect teacher. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to all of a sudden overnight become the best teacher that you can be. Make sure you're just uh, being there for your kids, honoring one another's feelings, uh, being honest about that, but then also uh, setting up some boundaries and expectations. I, I did put on my Twitter a couple days ago, some ideas about reading, uh, ideas about morning meeting, and I'll follow up today with, with, with another idea uh, about how to spend time alone and what we can do uh, in that solo time, as I call it. Um, all right, I wanna jump in, I wanna bring Connie in because I feel like a lot of these questions uh, I wanna know Connie's uh, opinion on as well. So let me bring Connie in. Don't hit the wrong button, Justin, that would be so embarrassing. Boom, add con. Waiting for Connie. Somebody write that song. I think it's also, for, while we're waiting for Connie, I'm gonna reply to my mother who asked, how do I find you live? I hope you're online now, mom.
Buddy is here as well. Buddy, do you want to say hello? Come here. Come here, buddy. While we're waiting for Connie to connect, uh, let's get an update from Buddy. <laughs> buddy had a very uh, eventful morning. I think he ate a stink bug. So, <laughs> say hi, buddy. Good job. What if we just sat like this for a whole hour? Okay, go ahead. All right, let's see. Connie's having some issues. Let's try again. Oh, I see so many wonderful people in the chat. Hi, Emily. Hi, Abby. Hi, Andy. Owen. Broca's here. Oh, Mandy's here. Hi, Mandy. All right, let's try it again. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Things, things can be difficult. I'm, I'm just figuring all of this out, too. So. Well, I was moving around in rooms. And as you know, I've got, I've got to pull up the blinds wherever I am so that I, my best chance here is that Walter right here <laughs> and, and Franklin right over there is not going to start barking. So we'll see how this goes. That's my number one fear, too. And that's why I've, I've left the door to the attic open so the dogs could come and go as they please. But Buddy's really taken to barking at everyone and everything that goes by. So Same. Yep. Who cares? This isn't... This isn't uh, anything polished and formal we, we're just hanging out well i'm glad to hear that because i don't have polish or formal for you so here we go <laughs> well i have uh so many fun questions that were submitted it is it's really cool to see uh the different types of questions people submit and then also where everyone's coming from I mean, we had questions from brazil and portugal and korea oh, australia it's really cool but um right away i just feel like i need to tell folks how much i admire you uh, as Thank someone you. who, yeah, you're, you're great at standing on your own two feet as, as an individual. As uh, are you. And you had well, to learn it you. even faster than I did on a much larger stage than I did. That was an adventure. But you wrote a, a helpful book. Uh, and I, I, I called you about that early on. So if nobody knows about Connie's book, uh, it's called And His Lovely Wife. I have it here. Uh, it's about um, separating yourself from your partner, standing on your own two feet, but also being a supportive and loving spouse. And you, you really have a lot to figure out as you navigate that new environment, right? When to voice your opinions, when to, when to offer a helpful word, and when to stay back and let the team do their thing. Well, I thought it was important early. Well, a couple of things were important for me. Now, I can understand this happened quite a few years earlier than you. Sherrod ran for the Senate in 06, and we had just gotten married in 04. Um, and it was quite the earthquake. <laughs> um, I'm a newspaper columnist. I was a woman paid to give my opinion. I had to take a leave of absence at my insistence early. And yeah. then um, I started to understand pretty quickly. I couldn't, it was really hard to go from being a woman always saying what I think to going, well, well Sherrod says this and Sherrod thinks that and Sherrod says. And so that was a bit of an adjustment too. What I learned over time and the reason I wrote, well, I wrote the book because my editor wanted me to. Yeah. But I wrote it in part because I understood clearly you should just be who you are always. Right. There, nothing should change. And anyone who wants to change you needs to be off the team or at least to be quiet around me because yeah. I'm not going to change the colors I wear. I'm not going to change the opinions I have. And it made it a lot yeah. easier to just be me. I mean, I had yeah. a whole book already of my columns that were published. So it wasn't like they weren't going to know what's, what I've been thinking about over the years. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting adjustment for me. At one hand, I mean, I've never been political and it only stood at Peter's side while he ran for mayor and then the DNC chair. That didn't require right. a lot of me. And then figuring out how to be my own person and how to voice my opinions and how not to lose your identity. Because I think you could really easily, uh, I think you could uh, very easily fall into the trap of letting people tell you who to be, how to be, what to say, what not to say. And I had to learn quite rapidly what advice to take and then what advice to hear uh, but but not take, right? Uh, especially when it came to trying to be the figure that I felt the country needed, but never letting go of my own values and what I thought made me who I am. 
right. so th 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 there's a lot there. And now you're still kind of, uh, I mean, especially as a journalist, you have to figure out how to separate maybe personal from political, from uh, spousal, right, and journalists? Or do you feel like you, you have found like the right balance of all of them? Well, if there's a balance to be found, and who knows, but I think as a columnist, which means I'm, I give my opinion, uh, I report it all the time first, you know, I, I still yeah. work as a journalist every day, I'm writing any column. Um, and, I, and I think over time, people have come to understand that yes, I have these opinions, I had them long before I knew Sherrod, uh, we be, we got very lucky after being longtime single parents and found each other. Um, yeah. I looked up his voting record before I'd even go out with him because I need to make sure that he had 100% <laughs> on choice and on gay rights. And I just wish all of you, all the people out there, could check the voting record of somebody they're going to date first because it makes it a whole lot easier. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, at least it did for me. Um, so over time, you you settle into who you are. And now, as you know, I'm pivoting. I'm still going to be writing my column, but I've got a novel coming out in June That's that I've been working on for so many years, but I'm scared all over again. So I'm living the advice I always give my students. If you're never getting scared, you've stopped growing. You got to keep trying, right? Speaking of growing and getting scared again, Mandy Moore, I agree with you. I love her new album. Love, love, yes. love it. Oh my gosh. I, I think Sherry can sing two of the songs by heart already, but we'll Good. see. Good. Good. <laughs> I, I mean, I've listened to it on repeat. The thing I love about her album is that um, it's really poetic, but it's a it's an entire personal journey. I mean, all of the lyrics there have so much weight to them. So, well, whenever we speak from our hearts, you've done it. I've seen you do it so many times in speeches and on Twitter. Mandy's doing it with her songs. You hope to be doing it with your writing. You're always speaking from your heart. If you're really speaking the truth, right? Yeah. And if you're really speaking about what matters in your world, you're speaking from your heart. Yeah, I I like what you said about uh, being scared and nervous. I felt. I felt so often on the trail, absolutely terrified before I'm I went sure. into something because yeah. the, the, the expectations were very high, right? The weight of the situation was immense. Uh, you never want to be the one to, to ruin anything, right? Or to sour the campaign. But afterwards, if you, I, I would often go in there and just say, I have no control over uh, most of the things in the situation except for myself, right? Uh, when it came to protesters or people who would ask, you know, extremely sharp pointed questions, not because they wanted to ask a question, but they wanted to say a statement right behind their question. Right, right, right. Pushing right, right. all of those things aside, just feeling like I'm just going to go in there and be myself. I'm going to, I'm going to tell my truth, tell my story, whether it resonates with them or not. And then I found so often on the other side of that, when I come out of that event, I feel so great about it because I was just me. And I let go of the weight and the expectations of other people, which I think is so common, not just for political spouses, but for everybody that Certainly. you get so wrapped up in the expectations that other people have of you that you start giving up what, what makes you so unique. Uh, you stop trusting yourself, too. Right. And you mentioned worry. And of course, that's such a theme right now, right, for different reasons. And a couple of mornings ago, Sherrod called me in. He hadn't slept well because Sherrod, as you know, my husband is Senator Sherrod Brown, and he's in the in Washington still, um, driving, not flying. And he's being so careful because I'm asthmatic. And he's yeah. really trying to protect a lot of people, including his wife. But after one particularly long night, he's, he's just started listing all the things he worried. And I said, look, you, you worry about what you can affect. Right. You worry about what's within your control, which is something I have to remind myself all the time. I mean, this, this I, as I joked when this first started becoming much more serious, right? I was, I am a worst case scenario person from yeah. birth. Uh, so now I feel like it has been my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can just, your head can get full of the what ifs. And the only thing that yeah. happens with that is it takes, it just sucks out the joy of the current moment in your current day. As you and I were talking before we got on, I'm healthy today, you're healthy today, people we love are healthy today. Um, a lot of my neighbors are healthy. I am not gonna waste this day by right. worrying about what happens when we're, if and when we're not, because then I've robbed myself of the yeah. little bit of normalcy I can have right now. Absolutely, yeah. I think one of the ways that I'm coping with it uh, is by not putting that pressure on myself, that I feel if we adjust, we all adjust differently, right? And I saw yeah. this beautiful poem on Instagram yesterday just about, um, you know, 
it's okay if you didn't uh, bake the bread or bake the pie. It, it's okay if you didn't write the book. It's okay if you didn't, you know, watch that show on Netflix that you anticipated. If all you did was, you know, allow yourself to be comfortable in that worry that like that's enough. Yeah. And I, I think we're especially kind of pressured to be so productive right now. Like, oh, well, we're working from home. So we have all this. Right. Right. Uh, Pete and I were talking about this at dinner last night that I, I, I just feel so overwhelmed with worry for, for so many people. And, and, and Peter was saying, you know, if this was like a flood, we'd all be running, running down and filling sandbags or, you know, we would be out doing things with our hands. But, um, Oh, Emily just commented it. I think it's Tiptoe Sage is the poet on, on Instagram. Oh, so oh nice. That, that's good. That poem. You know, but we're, we're not supposed to leave our homes right now. And so there's that, like, really that social isolation, not seeing other people and feeling like you can be extremely helpful. On the other hand, here's the one thing I hadn't thought about until today. And I posted a picture that I had taken a while ago of Franklin looking through the banister rails of our porch. He was yeah. watching me when I was weeding at, well, quite some time ago. But I thought, you know what? Self-quarantine is really hard, but we've never been more powerful, Walter, in our ability to save other people's lives. Uh, uh, now I'm going to go fetch my dog. Hold That's on, true. please. But we've never been. All right. See, now he thinks he can just wedge himself between the blinds. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, this is Walter, whom we adopted eight months ago today, actually. He was found on the streets. Yeah, Walter. Joined... Yep. So... That has really helped me to remember that as well, that we have never been more powerful than yeah. we are right now. If we stay home, we keep other people safe. Right. And I think a lot of people are starting to understand uh, how much connection is so key. You know, I think we get so used to being isolated even when we're, when we're out and about and in our own circles, right? And how important it is to connect with other people and, uh, and care for other people. I mean, look at the ways we're doing it now, even through distance and through you know, social media. Uh, how important it is to make sure we're taking care of people and helping others smile and, and building one up and helping people navigate anxiety, worry, and pressure. Right. Um, okay, I have more questions for you. All right, let me scoop up. Well, oh, you want to go outside? That would be terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Franklin, you too. All right. Maybe I'm actually be offended a while that. Pardon me? I'm offended my dogs aren't up here. I feel like, I mean, last time when we did this with Mandy, they, they ran away from the room too. I don't, I don't get it. They're here all day. And then I, th I think they know. They don't want to be put on the spot. They're a little camera shy. I wish I uh, were. Right. They are never camera shy. <laughs> Buddy's not camera shy. Truman doesn't care about any of us. Um, <laughs> okay. So, so you mentioned, um, a, a few projects around the house, but what are you doing right now to stay healthy, stay sane? Yeah. I'm writing a lot of more of my handwritten letters, which I love to do anyway. But now I'm sending a lot more pop-up cards to the kids, the grandkids, because we have seven. Oh my um, I just finished. I have a column due today. I'm still writing my syndicated column. And uh, I have a piece coming out in Time Magazine next week. Talk about a pivot. When they originally asked me to do it weeks ago, it was going to be simply, there's a lot of good in the world still, right? And they asked me if I'd be willing. Well, now we had to pivot. Uh, and so I, I had to scrap basically essentially the second half of the essay. And I ended up liking it okay, though. I mean, I, I like where it went. I, I'm never happy with my work. I never read my books, for example. I will never be doing that. Um, we're still gearing up to try to figure out what we're going to do with the book tour because The Daughters of Erie Town comes out June 9th. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of the book, if not all, the book talks are probably going to be canceled in, you know, in person. But we're figuring out what we're going to do about that. Right. I'm trying to support a lot of other writers right now. When their books come out, I've asked them to let me know. And if there are any writers watching this, if you have a book coming out in the next few weeks, hit me, direct message me on Twitter. Everybody can. You're uh, public on the day of publication. And I'll push it out there because we got to be supportive of one another. And uh, in touch a lot with friends, doing a lot of Zoom with family, yeah. grandkids, right? And we're teaching still. And this online is a real struggle when it's my students, many whom don't have great bandwidth or don't have a lot of strong wireless. Um, they're going home. You know, my kids are not the Ivy Leaguers. My kids are at Kent State. And yeah. some of them are having to take, of younger, take care of younger siblings now. Employers are asking them to work more hours and they're not giving them protection. I really want to write about that, but I don't want them to lose their jobs right now. Right. So I'm worried about them pretty much all the time. And then, of course, they're sharing. And I don't need to tell you, with Pete as your husband, um, when your husband is on the front lines, 
there are all kinds of things you can worry about, including just is he sleeping? Is he resting? Is he keeping his distance? He refused to go in for that. He's a ranking member of banking and housing, but he did not go in in person. He refused. He said, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do conference calls. Senator Patty Murray did the same thing. Um, after Rand Paul's news, uh, after that happened, they all wish they had been doing more by conference call. And so that's yeah. what's happening now. And they're voting and they'll be voting in staggered um, entries. So that they, some, the door will already be propped open so they don't have to touch a door handle. But you know how much I worry about all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I've been joking that um, my hope was at the end of the campaign, we'd have time to reconnect with one another. And I could, you know, I have more of a hands-on approach to his eating and, uh, rest and boy, what a kind of a sick joke. Now we're locked in the house yeah, right. <laughs> together, but right. always worrying about that. Um, well, uh, let's see, what else do we have here for you? Um, oh, uh, I don't know if this is their name, but it was part of their handle. So Trin asked, uh, a time in your life that taught you something you'll never forget. Well, there've been a number of things, you know, if you're lucky, you, you keep learning as you grow. Yeah. I think back to what my mom said. He said two things. Hi, guys. <laughs> well, there they are now. They're very vocal. My mom said always to us, don't marry him until you see how he treats the waitress. And what uh -huh. she meant, of course, is how we treat the people we're allowed to mistreat is the measure of who we are. That has certainly informed my life and my work. And um, it seems particularly poignant right now when we're thinking of all the people who are delivering groceries for us, they're, they're delivering yeah. our prescription drugs, they're working at stores, and of course, all of our healthcare providers who have to be there. How we treat the people we're allowed to mistreat, because you know we can be pretty awful to them when we show up for care, and they're still gonna give us the best care they possibly can. Yeah. So if there's anything that has really stayed with me, is it trend you said over the years? I, I have to believe trend, that. Yeah. That's, and I think we have an opportunity right now, you know, if, we, if you have the ability, um, and if you're using, you know, Instacart or Shipt, you know, uh, folks are out there because they're depending on that income. And if you have it within your ability uh, to yes. tip more, please do. And if you're going through a drive-through, uh, please uh, tip folks that, that, that are living on that and, and depending on that. Uh, and be as kind as you can. I've been reading too many stories about how awful folks are being at uh, yeah, grocery stores same. and uh, you know, to folks who are kind of putting their life on the line there, uh, being exposed to so many people just to provide that service for you. And I think it's right. it's, a, it's a, a call, it's a reminder uh, of our values and, and how we treat people around us. So please be kind to everybody uh, around you, just depending on it. All I right, have well, such faith in Americans overall. Yeah. I have such faith in the kindness overall. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more of those stories. I run a kindness thread on my public Facebook page every Saturday. And I just say, what happened this week? What was an encounter of kindness either that you committed or that you were on the receiving end? Um, I have noted, my Time Magazine editor noted this as well. The numbers had decreased in the last couple of weeks. People are pretty scared. And so now they're getting more inventive in how to be creative because they can't tell just stories about happening, things happening in person. Um, but yeah. I have, my faith is steadfast in people. I think most people want to do the right thing. I learned this as a columnist. Most people want to do good in the world. Most people don't think they matter and that what they would do is matter. And if nothing has become so clear right now, so much of what we do, and particularly if we're willing to stay home and be appreciative, as you said, of the people who can't and supportive financially, as well as just in our interactions, we are going to save lives. We can help yeah. save lives. Absolutely. It's something I've, I've admired about you as well, just uh, your focus on kindness and positivity, especially on social media, which I feel, <laughs> you know, at, and now folks are spending so much time on it because they're isolated at home. Yes, they are. I, seeing an uptick. I, I always joked on the trail because, uh, and you and I have talked about this before, people ask us, you know, how are you so upbeat? Why are you so kind on, on social media? And it's not like a you know, a strategic choice no. uh, that was like made in a conference room. It's just, I don't see the point in arguing with strangers online. And I, and I don't, uh, I have never uh, seen on Twitter uh, or any social media platform, someone say like, oh my gosh, Connie, thank you so much for your input. I totally see it your way now. I'm definitely gonna vote for your candidate or I'm, I've definitely changed my worldviews because of your comment. And 
you know, I've always said, if you want to influence an election, you should talk uh, with people, not at them. Um, right. Which is why, you know, door knocking and phone banking is more uh, successful in the long run than arguing with, you know, a Twitter bot that has a picture of like a chicken as it's an you know, emoji. Like what, like what, what are you doing with your time when you could be doing so much other, uh, so much other work and putting out so much kindness into the world rather than like arguing with a stranger online. Well, so talk I, a little I bit about that. that. I would agree with, uh, and I would also add this, that it's not as if, I would never want to give the impression that I am never upset about things I see or the news I'm hearing. Uh, every, every time I, after I watch President Trump's latest spectacle in the White House right now, I have to go for a long walk usually. Um, when I'm really worked up, I walk, I play with my dogs, I have a long talk with Sherrod, I call friends, and then I post. Yeah. Right? I give myself a break. I, I am not superhuman, and I'm not perfect, and I would never want to suggest that I am. I know some can think I'm almost a little corny because I really do want the upbeat posts there, too, but I really feel them in my heart. And I, I guess part of it is I'm so influenced by having seven grandchildren in my life. I need them to – there's going to be such a record. Yeah. of what I did in the world and of their grandfather. And I want them to be able to find the strength in what we did. And I want them to see the kindness in what we tried to do uh, yeah. because we really feel it. It does add another layer when you think of your legacy. With, with, for us, it's, we think of our family, that's it. I don't mean the world at large. I, I will easily be forgotten. But I hope my grandchildren will find strength and their own courage when they need it, knowing that we had tough times and here's what we did. Yeah. Absolutely. Does that sound corny? That's pretty corny. No, after. no I think people, uh, but that's the problem, right? We're made to feel that that's corny because we care more about kindness and values and making, and building other people up rather than tearing other people down. It's not corny. I think that is actually the true show of strength. I think it is stronger uh, and harder um, to be kind and balanced uh, on social media. It's so easy to tear people down, especially, I mean, if you're hiding behind like a fake account or you're hiding behind, uh, you know, that that veil social media can give you. It's so easy to tear people apart. I mean, I've got a lot of opinions on things and sometimes we all wanna go off, right? But sure. I, channel the, I channel that energy somewhere else. I don't find any value in tearing someone down, especially because we're all imperfect and nobody is perfect. I think that's the thing about Twitter, right? Like you wake up on, and you open Twitter and you're like, okay, who are we destroying on Twitter today, right? If they, it's yeah. like, the Twitter sphere has decided to attack one person of the day or who's canceled today. And I just don't see any value in that because we all make mistakes. There's all missteps. There, of course, are things to be corrected uh, and, and always folks who need to apologize, et cetera. But what are you doing with your, with your time and your energy and how you are participating in social dialogue? And, I, and, I, and I've just always respected you and admired the way that you go about that on social media. Well, well, thank you. The feeling is so mutual on that. Well, thank you. Well, I think we're running out of time. I, I, I'm so grateful for you for taking time. And uh, please give the pups a uh, pat on the head for me. Uh, and well, tell the senator to say hello as well. And give Pete a hug for me, would you? I will. Good All to right. see you. You too, Jason. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Connie's remarkable. If you're not following Connie, uh, please check out her social media on um, Instagram uh, and Twitter. I hope, I hope you take a couple of those nuggets just with you today. I really do think there's uh, a lot of value in building people up rather than tearing people down. And uh, when it comes to uh, the political discourse happening out there, you know, you got to protect your heart and yourself first. And if you're going to get involved in a conversation uh, online, which I think mostly it's not a conversation when you're trading messages with somebody uh, on a Twitter thread. It's really not a conversation happening. There's just people yelling into the ether past one another. That's why I think if you really want to be helpful, if you really want to help your candidate win, or if you really want to spread a message, um, donate and advocate uh, to an organization doing that. Um, know your messaging, know your audience, um, but then go out there and talk with people. Uh, and so often on social media, we're not talking with one another. We're just talking at one another, which is why out on the trail, I always encouraged our volunteers and our organizers to go out and knock on more doors, make more phone calls, uh, have genuine face-to-face -face conversations and connections with people. Because uh, if you're just yelling uh, at people online, you're not convincing uh, anybody. So I hope you take that uh, with a grain of salt. And I also just hope you protect your heart and protect yourself. You know, you don't have to fight every battle. You don't have to 
uh, jump into every uh, piece of drama happening on Twitter. Uh, it's kind of, I used to tell my students that uh, Twitter's kind of like a dumpster fire. Uh, and when you see it, you have the opportunity to dump more gas on the dumpster fire, or you can just walk away. Because the best way to put out a fire is to deny oxygen. So uh, don't even get involved. Uh, uh, went a little bit over time, but I really appreciate everyone uh, submitting your questions. They're beautiful questions, and I see a lot of uh, concern in your questions as well, not only for, uh, for Peter and I and the dogs, but your neighbors and your community and our country uh, and our world uh, as a whole. I hope you take care of one another. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Uh, and in doing that, please make sure uh, you're following the scientists, you're following all the advice uh, out there. Make sure you're checking where your news uh, is coming from. Wash your hands, stay at home, take care of one another. Uh, if you want to catch up with Pete, I know he's doing Instagram Live today at 5. He'll be talking to Derek Cass, who's an emergency room doctor uh, in New York City who's been diagnosed uh, with coronavirus. They'll be catching up, talking a little bit more, uh, a little bit more political over on Pete's feed. Uh, than on mine, and also um, some updates and insight uh, from, from Dr. Cass uh, as well. I, I see a lot of your comments as well. Uh, it's just so nice to see all of you. I hope you're taking care of one another uh, and yourself. Uh, we'll be doing this again tomorrow, actually, at 3. I haven't announced the guests yet, but it'll be coming shortly. I so appreciate you spending your time uh, again with me today, with Buddy Truman, of course, doesn't care about any of us. Uh, you can catch Pete uh, at five. Uh, until tomorrow, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.